Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new educational video here at Market Wisdom. So glad you joined us once again this afternoon. Make sure you take a second, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel as we continue to bring you all the educational content we possibly can. We're, we're in the middle. I guess we're kind of getting to the end of earnings season at this point, but we wanted to uh, take a second and touch on a couple of different trade ideas when it comes to earning season specifically. So we have to have, you know, a playbook of trades that we look at throughout the year as a whole. Maybe you like to trade the open, maybe you like to trade the close, but there are certain times of the year where we maybe pull out specific trades that we can use during earning season. Let's bring in Neil and Sean here and we'll talk about uh, three specific trades, guys, that uh, we're going to look at for earning season. Absolutely. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is uh, people will call it like gap and go, whatever you might want to uh, consider it. And I think it, you, it can apply to uh, either something going to the upside or to the downside. And uh, I'm going to use an example from today. Obviously, uh, you'll be watching this in the future, but uh, uh, we had Haynes Brands on our watch list here that we do for free, believe it or not, actually. Uh, and look, post earnings on Haynes, uh, they beat top and bottom lines, but uh, yeah guiding below consensus and the thing about the thing about this is with lowered expectations across the board during covid um when the, when people are guiding lower here that's been like the uh, uh the sort of like the the death stroke uh, for multiple names so you're gonna see an obvious gap down sometimes extreme examples are fun uh and we'll use this one and not to beat up on haynes here but uh, uh closing at 1637 in the pre-market, I mean, it was consolidating in, it, it, on low volume at $14 for most of the morning. It tried to catch a bit of a bid. So if you're talking about a gap and go, it means the, the gap to the downside, and then it continues going in that direction. A couple of ways that you can play this. If the volume is very, very low, then I don't necessarily love uh, going short in front of this big of a gap here, uh, maybe taking it off the open uh, if it bounces back up into 1450, 1460, unless you really like some key levels. Uh, if you go back to a, a larger time frame, you can find some levels here at 1450 uh, that are good. That can uh, they can sort of firm that level up for you. Go ahead and take that trade. I'm more talking about just a simple break right here off of the open. This is 930. I'll just zoom in just so you can see a little bit better here. Right at 930, you get a bit of a test. It tries to break. It tries to break the pre-market lows. There's a, there's a test to the top. Does not break any of the established levels to the upside. So when you do eventually retake the bottom, uh, it's, a, it's a, just a bottom end break. It's a pretty clean move. I think it actually goes against you two or three cents tops, and you see the continuation. Unfortunately, the only trade I end up taking is I miss this one and take an even dollar 13, which just does not go for me. I actually get wicked out by a dark pool here. Uh, but it's just a simple situation where you have, negative, you have a, a negative report or something about that report which the market is going to punish, uh, punish the stock for. There's a lack of a bid that's able to hold. Uh, you take an opening trade once it breaks the low of the day there. Now, a couple of ways you can stop it out. You got to look at that consolidation at, at 14 if you like that, or you give it all the way back uh, up to that little sort of, you know, first couple of minutes or first 30 seconds, that top end, 14.40, 14.50. Either way you want to play it, it's just a bottom break. It has to be a bad report for a specific reason. The other thing I would say, and the last, the last thing I would say here is, uh, if you do jump to a, a daily chart, I would sort of avoid this. In this case, because I'm talking about selling something that was weak, uh, I would avoid a stock that had a bad report but was in an unbelievable long-term uptrend, which was super, super strong. In this case, you already had Haynes uh, sort of running into uh, some levels. If you just, and again, this is going way back in the daily chart. It had been running uh, into some clear resistance points anyways. Uh, it had some trouble. It gapped up going into the earnings. Uh, you did have some levels to the top side that it was struggling to get past. So it had been slowing down. Had it been going parabolic into the earnings, maybe a different story. Just another, another bit of a tidbit here. Uh, so it can work to the upside. It can also work to the downside. Gap down, continuation move. Okay, so a, a great call there, and it's great that we're doing this during earnings season, so we do have a lot of uh, real-life examples to show you, and I think uh, no better one here today, and I actually have uh, my execution on here, and I think it makes a lot of sense, and it, it very easy to sort of explain and understand what's happening today. Qualcomm comes out uh, overnight with big, big earnings, man, up almost 13% right now, and so I already knew that we wanted to go long, right? So here's, I can actually call up a daily chart of Qualcomm as well. Here's the daily chart breaking out so this is yesterday trading down here 125 in change this is another play right here i love getting more aggressive 
when we see a breakout of recent highs, in this case, all-time highs, uh, right here of 132 and change, if we know we're going to open up higher than that, then I right away can get more aggressive because I already know that the buyers want this thing above its all-time high. It was a great report. And if it's a big company like Qualcomm, then, hey, uh, there are a lot of people that maybe also could be caught short. So you might want to watch out for short squeezes. Like, they come and they say, oh, well, even if it's a good report, we'll get out if it's near the, all, you know, if it's near the high. And obviously, when it opens up above the high, then there are some squeeze opportunities here. But I'm going to bring you to the actual daily chart here. Uh, sorry, Sorry, the minute chart for the current day. This is what I wait for. Like, you know, normally you can trade, and what Neil was sort of talking about, you can get aggressive right off the open if it's already gapped and you want to get in right away. This trade we actually take a little more patience with, and we wait for it to settle down and finally take out some of these early highs that were made. So here's Qualcomm again cruising. It's already up. It's up to 147. Closed yesterday, 125. So we're up $20. We know it's going to be a big day. It's up a lot of percent. So instead of getting in right off the open, and here's the open right here, 930. So it's basically this little green. If you're getting excited and say, oh my God, I want to go long Qualcomm. Well, if you go long on that opening print at about 145.70, as I see it on the side, you actually have to suffer all the way down here, five, six, seven dollars against you before finally, you know, again, if you're long right here, you do have a winner as it comes all the way back to the upside. What I actually do is wait and be very, very patient with this one. Sometimes you'll miss this trade because the gap, it will happen. It'll just, you'll, you'll get printed here and it'll just start to take off, right? This stock, because it's a little over, probably a little overextended up, up this much, we wait for the pullback, right? Once it forms these bottoms, that's what I put these lines here for. This is 143.50. I love playing 50s and even dollars on earning plays because they're optionable spots, right? A lot of options will expire at the dollar or at the 50 cent level. So we'll see what happens there. It runs through that like butter all the way down. And then look what it does at 142. This is going to now give me some confidence on an out. So I'm now noticing that this is kind of bottomed out here. This is 143. This little line here is 142. You have a couple wicks lower, 141.75 or so. We'll ignore those. But we know that there's a base down here. Then there's another base being developed right here. So I'm actually going to put an ellipse on that. So you can see right there. So another base being built. That gives me confidence. We break above VWAP. And look, guys. I take a 145.50 break. So again, I'm using the 50s and the evens as a spot. Not only is that a key spot, but it's also right where we open. So this gives me some confidence to know that, hey, if I go long here, I do have some downside protection. We put the trade on. It instantly blows upside a dollar. We take the dollar. Then we take the dollar 50 profit there as well. And then watch this. It just extends higher. So that gives me that whole move. So 145.78. Unfortunately, I don't take it out until here for a $2 winner, but we leave some money on the table. But it still gives you that extended move. So you don't have to put the risk on at the opening print. You sort of let it settle down, build that base. And look, sometimes that doesn't happen, right? It just takes off and you miss it. But if you do notice a stock that strong that comes down, look for a base and then trade it off that opening print and you can still enjoy some upside there. So Qualcomm today, a great stock for this kind of a trade. Absolutely. Great example there. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, earnings, guys. We're touching on three specific trades that you can look for during any, uh, earnings season. I want to uh, touch on uh, sentiment, uh, specifically sentiment. We used to uh, talk about this uh, way more than we do now for some reason. But uh, when it comes to earnings reports, we look for three key data points that in combination with positive sentiment can lead to a directional type bias. So uh, if we get you know, you're looking at an earnings uh, report. If we get, you know, the per share number, the revenue number, and the guidance all in the same direction. So you get a beat on the per share, you get a beat on the revenue number, you get a, a guidance that is better than expected for either the next quarter or maybe even the next entire year. You know, look for that long type of sentiment trade uh, when it comes to the open. Now, I want to touch on uh, a way to kind of approach it mentally when you go into the open so you're not getting confused at what direction you should be trading. If all three of those data points are positive, then we throw out the short idea. We don't even think about short. And just by simply eliminating the thought of going short, you're making it way easier on yourself to decide when to execute a trade. You have your level, 
when that stock or price gets to that level, you simply execute the long trade. So uh, the, the example I'm going to use is a little bit different. I'm going to use Expedia. Now, there's all kinds of problems with travel companies, but Expedia came out with earnings. Uh, this was uh, this morning or aftermarket, I think last night. Uh, they did report a loss, but the loss was smaller than expected. Their forecast going forward was also a loss, but it was smaller than expected. And the per share number, also a loss, still better than what analysts were expecting. So look at Expedia today. So we get a nice pop. Yes, this is hindsight, but we get uh, a nice pop in the aftermarket. Uh, it was aftermarket yesterday uh, on the actual news. It's up 4.75% today. I want to disregard all of this price action because this is a very, very quick trade that you're going to take. This is 930 right at the open. So a very key level is going to be the high from the aftermarket after the report, which in this case was 104.50. Remember, positive, positive, positive equals a long bias on the trade. It's very simple. So all we're doing is finding a key level, looking for the long bias trade. In this case, you're looking for momentum through 104.50. Look at this. It gives you more than a $2 move, almost $2.75 move uh, to the upside there. 104.50 up to 106.75 in a straight line. Obviously, you're trading $105 stock. You're going to have to size yourself accordingly, and you're going to have to give it uh, the amount of room that it requires. But the keys here, look for the per share number, the revenue, and the guidance all in the same direction, and then eliminate the other side. You don't even think about taking the other side. In this case, uh, we're talking about a long trade. So there you go, guys. Three trade ideas when it comes to earnings season. Hope you like that one. Let's go to Valeria. Hey guys, thank you for this great information. Dear viewers, please subscribe to this channel and join our live trading show every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Time.